Ed Keenholz works and lives in Los Angeles. The boldness and imagination of his creations have caused a stir in the world of art, but professional opinion of his work is sharply divided. This is the opinion of Henry Seldes, art editor of the Los Angeles Times. Mr. Keenholz is no doubt sincere in his creations, but since they have no aesthetic value whatsoever, they can hardly be called art. At best, they're very literal social protests in the guise of visual expression. Dory Ashton, art critic of Arts and Architecture magazine and former art critic of the New York Times, thinks differently. I think the work of Mr. Keenholz is an inspired and authentic commentary on contemporary society. The common materials he plucks from his own environment, he transforms. And it seems to me that in this transformation, he captures the essence of art. You'll meet Ed Keenholz and see his work in The Story of an Artist. I'm John Willis. And this junkyard, and other places even more unlikely, provide a contemporary artist, Ed Keenholz, with the basic materials for his work. He takes the discarded trash of society and reshapes it into striking, sometimes shocking forms. These forms then find their way back into homes, galleries, and museums throughout the country. This is the story of a modern artist. Ed has a one-man art show coming up, and he's collecting parts for a work he's calling Boy, Son of John Doe. I arrived in Los Angeles about 10 years ago, flat broke. Out of necessity, I'd live off the fringes of society like a termite. I'd haunt the thrift stores and the junkyards looking for things I could use, clothes I could wear. I lived in a studio, cost 10 bucks a month. I kept painting away. And finally, the, the environment that I was in and, and I had created sort of the change of the type of thinking and the type of painting that I do. I decided that it was perhaps more honest for me to take a head and paint it than to paint a head on canvas, like on a two-dimensional plane. So I started putting together various objects I find from time to time, the things that have been called constructions. Perhaps unconventional kind of art expression, but it seems to fit what I do in the way I think the best. to mannequin factory to wrecking yard. Ed searches for and uncovers the pieces and parts his latest creation requires. Cadillac door over there I want. That, that yellow one that's stuck over there in the, in the rack. Is it damaged at all? Yeah. How much? It's got a big dent get... down through the center of it. We get a call from a body shop. We're going to get at least $25. Where's all, the, where's all the people standing here waiting to buy them? Well, you know, the line call us we get a lot of calls. Why is it? Oh. So that sort Everything of we got is always junk, Ed. Whenever Listen, you want man. it. You come down here and you grind us out. Fine, it's, got a, it's got a big dent down it. All right, all right, all right. How much are you going to give us I'll for give this you now? $250 for this junk. Yeah. Junk, literally junk. junk. Everything's always junk. 
Come on, I went on. I, I pulled the stuff off. You didn't have anybody else to do it. Half the stuff was laying off anyway. Oh, it was not. I, oh, I took Ed, give me that shot every time. Come on, Every Ed. time you give us the trouble, so. <laughs> I'll give you <laughs> ten bucks for the damn door. Listen, Eddie, we've got to make uh, a living, for goodness sake. You don't have to make it all off of me. What, what am I going to do with him, Al? I'm stuck. Oh, he gets it out of me every time. Ed, I want to tell you something. You remind me of my father with this here trading around business. Yeah. He used to give me a dollar before I went to sleep. Then at night, he would steal it back. And in the morning, he'd hit me for losing it. <laughs> That's the same thing with the business that you do. Seventy stairs up to my house. And every day I climb those stairs carrying something. A good third of the house has been carried up my back. All the nails, boards, furniture, tools, food. I find it's worth it though. I make payments of thirty-seven dollars a month. We have privacy and seclusion. It's only a couple minutes down the Hollywood Boulevard. We like it here. Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> I found that um, ad in the paper about uh, motorcycle. Better check it. Okay. Well, How's he been? Okay. Hi, little guy. The newspaper cost me a couple bucks a month, and I have to walk down the foot of the stairs for it every night. But I don't mind. Well, it gives me a lot of things, or saves me a lot of money I haven't got to spend. There's a guy here that's got a Honda motorcycle I want, and he wants to trade it. Now, all I've got to do is find out what he needs that I've got that I can count him out of his motorcycle with, and then I'll have my motorcycle. How about Thursday? How about 2 o'clock? You can come up to my house on Nash Drive. It's 2023. Okay. That's going to be a good deal, I think. Does it mean the gun in the motorcycle trade? Yeah. I, I think you'll go for it. I can give him this and some money, or I could give him. I can give him your gun. How do you feel about that? Son of John Doe is the final piece Ed needs to make in order to complete his show. Over a dozen other works have already been delivered to the gallery. When I was young and very naive, I saw a movie. And this movie had an artist living in a in a big city, in a penthouse studio. And on the balcony below was this beautiful blonde chick. And she was sunbathing. And by the end of the movie, the artist had the blonde. And I thought, that's a cool way to live. So when I finally ran away from the farm in Washington, I bought myself some canvas and easel and oils. And I started painting. And I kept watching over my shoulder, waiting for the chick to walk in, which of course she didn't, at least at that time. And when she finally did walk in, it didn't matter too much, because I was too much involved in the, what was happening there on the canvas. I've moved around the western half of the United States a lot. I've been in and out of a lot of art schools. I supported myself in any way that was possible. I like Los Angeles. It's easy. Because a city, a city of this size where people throw so much stuff away, you can get almost anything you want for no money at all. It's, you know, if you're a good hustler.
machine, isn't it? So this, this is just what I've been looking for. You've got another one of these? You bought a brand new one. Well, I'm, I'm going to get a new yeah. one. But, uh, this is a perfect gun for what I want. You, uh, you want to throw in about 25 bucks boot on the deal? <laughs> well, not hardly. <laughs> I mean, that's... Almost well, you a like gun. Almost a seven hundred dollar motorcycle new. That's a five hundred dollar gun there too. You don't have to ring it. needed cash to buy his home, he hit upon the idea of selling a share of himself as an artist. Virginia Condratio, who owns the Duan Gallery, became a patron. And in return for her money, she receives one of Ed's creations a year, each year, for 10 years. Ed's work has been added to her collection of modern masters. In addition to art, Ed also does carpentry work for Virginia's gallery and for other people around town. In the past year, he earned $2,000 for his labor and $1,500 from the sale of his art. Ed is prepared, however, when he builds his new house and studio to sell four more shares of himself. And he's confident he'll have no trouble. gets me out of the city, away from the pace and the tensions. Work goes with me, of course. I, I really can't get away from that. But it's a good chance to think about it, and decide about it, and be sure it's right. The deer, when I get one, and I usually get one every season, ends up at my table and gives me a tremendous sense of, of accomplishment in the, in the fact that I've gone out and I've pursued it, butchered it, and Mary cooks it, and we all eat. If I don't get a deer, that doesn't bother me too much because there's always something I find that I can use, something that finds its way back to my studio. It makes the thing, you know, the whole thing really worthwhile. It always amazes me when I start to put together a piece like this as it grows, it, it begins to assume a, a personality and a life all of its own. And it makes demands on you, and you, you fight with it, and it fights back. But you know, in the end, it's got to please you because if it isn't right, you've got to destroy it. And that really hurts. This piece seems to be going along pretty well. I, I'm not having the trouble with it I have with some of them. I've been up in the middle of the night a few times working on it. And Jenny comes out every morning and inspects it. She usually finds some toy that disappeared during the night, finds it incorporated into the piece. I don't know what she thinks about all that, but that's OK. She's young. She'll get over it. Considering the 
world situation and the, the idiots that control it, my friend Johnny and I decided to build a bomb shelter. Now, I don't know if it's going to work as a bomb shelter. It makes a great cave. If it does work, I'd sure like my family around after the mushrooms floated away. And I'd like to survive because I really can't think of anybody that could do more with the, with the remnants of Los Angeles than I could. In spite of all this impending disaster, I fiberglass everything so it won't decay. Pieces may be incinerated, but they're not going to rot. This is the time that really scares me. I've got the thing built, I've got everything in it. He's been painted once. He's got four legs, track shoes, tennis trunks, a zip gun, cigarettes, slow gin, football helmet, baseball glove, got a car, it's all there. It's been painted once and he's almost right, but he isn't quite right. to do because you can go into the thing and you can change it because at this time the paint's the only thing that's tying it all together and I can go into it and paint it again and chances are I'll ruin it. If I ruin it I've lost it. So you take a chance and go. teenage punk off my back. He can sit in the gallery with his mother and father. He really belongs with them. opening will take place here at the Ferris Gallery, a showcase for modern art. He helps the owners assemble and arrange his constructions. Marlena Deep Ditch is out for sure then, is that right Irving? Right. strange that people call these things art. I don't know if they're art or not. Maybe they're 3D cartoons. Maybe they're neo dada sculptures, like some of the critics say. I do know that, that I, I work as hard and as well as I could on each one. It pleases me, of course, that people come in and say they like them and, and even buy them because it's sort of a supreme mark of acceptance. But I do them because I think that the prime mover in, in all of our lives is death and, and the fear of death. Whatever you can do that involves you completely, immerses you within it, so that you forget about time passing and, and death coming closer, these are the things that really make you happy.
that boy died from Charter. Oh, this is John and Charter. And this is the family group. Well, they all seem to be part of... And here, a uh, handbook for boys, and beneath it, the intimate Henry Miller. <laughs> <laughs> the zip gun between the pages. <laughs> like, oh. Michael, you remember saying... Uh, yeah. That's um, you're right. What do you do? Push it? Pull it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I dig this stuff, don't you? It's all junk. You know, like this. Well, thank you. You know, you uh, better know I like I like uh, uh, the, You know, each thing is supposed to, you know, mean something, but they don't all gel. I mean, why the comic book? And with the jazz and the miller. <laughs> Not really. Mad. I like this here. Royce plays it has what a nice white to jar you. It has a white background. It's much more uh, impressive. It comes to more stuff. And uh, those things... Uh, what, what is it? I think that's a beautiful dress. That color is great. They're showing a lot of it this year. seen you to perpetrate a worse cultural crime. <laughs> Why not? A cultural crime. <laughs> Word comes from the gallery, and it's good news. Two of Ed's constructions have been sold at the opening. One of them, boy, son of John Doe. My drink for everybody. Yeah! Surely only a brutish sensitivity and a final disregard for art and public alike compel Edward Keenholz to, to perpetrate his latest hoax. I hesitate to call it an art exhibition at the Ferris Gallery, local emporium of avant-gardism. Keenholz's mania to stage foul, boring jokes reaches a new low in something called Boy, Son of John Doe. Certain Professional opinion on Ed Keenholz is divided, and it probably always will be, but he doesn't care. He goes right on working and enjoying life. Ed Keenholz is an artist. Pudenda infested imagery, an object of public scorn. There seems little chance our informed public will waste his time or money at the Keenholz exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, watch for the story of a young man who talks to the world through the medium of music. The story of a jazz musician.